All right, so I've been asked many times to do a video on premix and oil mixtures and stuff like that. So this is that video. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of nice comments on this video. So stick around, we'll talk about premix. So I get asked, what is my premix ratio? Well, first, let's talk about what oils I use and why. As you can see here, we have Valvoline. I like Valvoline, so I usually use Valvoline. And I don't really care too much for the brand, although like I said, I always use Valvoline. As long as it says TCW3 certified on it, that's what I use. Now why is that? That's because that's the only standard certification for two-stroke oils. And what that means is, in order to get that label onto your oil, you need to go through a series of tests. And that means that you have to run certain size engines for so long, at so so much RPM for like 72 hours, I mean, then you gotta take the engines apart and expect the components and all kind of stuff. And there's, there's only a certain amount of, um, you know, uh, there's a whole spec you can read about it. So, you know, I'll link it. But uh, so, but if you're going with another type of um, oil that's not TCW3 certified, then you don't know the quality. I mean, you have to trust the brand. You have to see what they say about it, how they're using it, and so that that's why. Um, so as you can see, this oil here, Super M, uh, I used this in the past, and the one bike I used it on after six months, it um, static blend. It uh, you know, blew a um, seal. Uh, it blew a crank seal. It was the 83 over here. So I rebuilt it. And ever since then, I've never put synthetic into it again. So that was seven years ago. It's still running strong. So I don't... <clears throat> My sense what did it. But I mean, it was an old bike. But still... Um, I just trust things that have some kind of certification that has a standard, so I know what to expect from this and haven't had any problems with it. Uh, so, <clears throat> as far as motor oil, a lot of people use ATF, 80 weight, that's fine. People say it works better on the clutch, the clutch will disengage better. Uh, sometimes with these heavier motor oils, uh, or regular four-stroke towel motor oil, so the transmission fluids, um, the clutch is more grabby. And my clutches are grabby, so, but I I still use this. I use SA30. I don't use any detergents, so I like it to be clean. And I've used it for 30 years or so, so I haven't had any issues with it, so that's just what I stick to. A long, long time ago, I think I used to use 5W30, but I've since changed it to just straight 30. So yeah, this is my oil mixture cup. So as you can see, uh, my oil mixture cup, it's got the side, but I never use the side. I always look into it. I like this one because you can just look into it, so you can pour from the top, and just as you pour into it from the top, you can look down and see what the number is. And there's the ounces on the side. So I can easily just see, you know, what ounce I'm at as I'm pouring. So I like that measuring cup. <clears throat> Next thing is, is a nitpick. Lean versus rich. So... Uh, if your bike is running lean, it typically means that you have more air than you need for the gasoline, right? So your jetting uh, needs to be fixed. If you're running rich, then you have more gasoline to air, and you need to fix your jetting. Lean condition can destroy your engine. A rich condition uh, does not really can destroy your engine, but uh, it can foul plugs. And it can smoke a lot and drip and clog things up and carbon stuff up. But it's not going to destroy your engine where you need to rebuild it. Whereas lean condition will destroy engines. The next thing is, um, <coughs> a lot of debates on what premix ratio to use. So here are some premix ratios. I use 32 to 1. That's 4 ounces per gallon. So... Your gasoline, 
when you premix is typically constant, one gallon. The variable component in premix is the oil. And so that's why you consider oil to be lean if it's less and rich if it's more. So the more oil you put, the richer, and the less oil you put, the leaner. And remember I said less lean conditions are damaging, rich conditions are not. So if I put a whole bunch of oil on my bike, you know, like I said, uh, you can carbon stuff up, file stuff up, not start because it's too much oil, you know, this and that. But lean condition will destroy the engine. It'll run rich <clears throat> and it'll destroy it. So um, what you pretty much you want to do is, I always use 32 to 1 for me. Uh, people say trail riding, you know, you can use 40 to 1. Some newer bikes recommend higher, but I still always do 32 to 1. You can use whatever you want. But, like I said, you want to know what I use? I use 32 to 1, which is a rich mixture. And um, the uh, uh, besides that being a, a rich mixture, 32 to 1, um, whenever you do your jetting, uh, if your bike is running rich, you don't change your oil. You never change the ratio. You pick what ratio your bike should run at. And then you jet your bike to that ratio. You don't change your ratio to your jetting. You change your jetting to your ratio. Okay? And in the end, then your bike won't be rich or lean. It'll be dialed in. Okay? So, <clears throat> now a lot of people will say that... Uh, Putting in less oil is a rich mixture. That doesn't make any sense on several fronts. It doesn't make sense because your gasoline's fixed, right? Now your whole component, your total component is variable because you're, you're varying your oil. You're mixing your oil with your gasoline. You're not mixing your gasoline to your oil. You're not saying, you know, I've got some oil here. Let me measure some gasoline for it. <laughs> you're saying, I've got some gasoline, one gallon. Let me measure some oil for it. So, <clears throat> that's one thing. It doesn't make sense because you're varying the oil. You're not varying the gasoline. In turn, you vary the gasoline because your total mixture has changed, right? You had a gallon, now you have a gallon and four ounces. You had a gallon, now you have a gallon and 1.28 ounces. So, however, I'm going to show you why, now mathematically why, saying that 60 to 1 being rich because of gasoline doesn't make any sense mathematically. And that's this last piece here. So, if you start out with 97%, 99% is only 2% more. 2.1%. I mean, it's actually 3%, but if you uh, baseline it to 99%, it's 102%, right? So, it's 2% higher than 97 because <clears throat> the 97 is 1%, or, you know, uh, 100%. So that's 100%, and then as you increase, you get to, you're only adding, there's only a 2.1% real difference between these two. Right? So you're talking about 100% you know, gasoline, 102% gasoline. That's what you're varying by 2%, 2.1% of the overall total. The oil in the other hand... You're going from 3% worth of the total compound down to 1%. That's a 306% difference. That's 100% is a 1, right? Up to 3, it's 306%. So 206% difference there. So this is a much huger percentage difference in the mixture. 300% difference in oil versus, you know, 2% difference. So why would that so, so why would you say that changing the premix is giving you a rich gas mixture based on a 2% change whereas the oil is a 300% change in difference. That's right, it doesn't make any sense. So mathematically it's incorrect. So if you're going to look at this and say that it's a rich mixture, then you don't um, you're not saying it mathematically. Most people, some, I don't know why people say this. It makes no sense. It's almost like people are trying to be smart or something, or you know, um, trying to make a play on words, or maybe they come from four strokes. 
So they're thinking about the gasoline, but until recently, I've actually never heard that before in my life. Growing up on two strokes, never heard anyone say that, you know, mixing less oil was a rich mixture. <laughs> never in my life until like the past year or so. When I think, I think more people coming from four strokes are coming over to two strokes now. And so these people who grew up on four strokes and always did four strokes, um, they come over to two strokes and then they make up these weird things in their mind. And one of these weird things in their mind is the 300% difference in oil is somehow, and a 2% dif difference in gasoline is somehow a rich mixture of gasoline. No, it's a rich mixture of oil because oil is the bigger component that varies itself uh, a much higher percentage. So, anyhow. <clears throat> That is my little rant on oil.